Coming to you live from the visitors' room in the All Ireland Space Programme's All Ireland Space Prison. It's this week's apocalypse. I am your co-host and current inmate, Kevin Lennon. With me, as always, visiting is John Ferris. John, how are you doing today? I'm fine. The question is, how are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I mean, I've been wrongly convicted of a crime I didn't commit, like the A-Team. So that's <laughs> kind of cool. Or Andy but- Dufresne. Or Andy Dufresne, yes, maybe like a you going for a, a Shawshank thing here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Although well, tunneling out isn't really an option. Tunneling for you. out is not an option in a space prison. No. Um, yeah, it's um, the the guards are very lax. I got to say around here, I think they just they, they're not really that worried about people breaking out because if you break out, where are you going to go? Yeah. Really. Um, so we're here in the visitors' room. It's uh, it's quite pleasant in here actually. Uh, it's sort of got like a nice sort of party atmosphere. Although you know, it's it, it's a little sad because you know I have been condemned for at least uh, what is it, three hundred and ninety-two months? I think my my sentence no. is, uh, and I only get visits once every ten years. So we really got to make the most of this one. Yeah, the only thing I- is that the, the visits seem to last a wee bit longer. Yeah, they do. They, they they give you they give you like like the best the better part of a day. It is. Uh, it's, it's kind of it's strange getting onto that Amazon ship to. to Take yeah. me, take me to the prison here. You get fly, did you get flown here by Jeff Bezos himself? Yep, yep. man of the people, Jeff Bezos. Indeed, this, yeah. This is actually an Amazon prison. <laughs> is it? Well, it's it's sponsored. There, there is a little sort of small sticker on the outside that does say "sponsored by Amazon." Uh, I don't know if that was a misprint by the All Ireland Space Program, or you know they're doing some dodgy dealings, or it's some knockoff company. Sure, it was definitely Jeff Bezos. It might have been just some other weird bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> the CEO of Mason. <laughs> well, I managed to stow some uh, some contraband in. Oh my gosh! What did you did you bring me like a phone? Did you bring me like a chisel? Did you bring me like like I don't know like some kind of hacking tool or something like that? <laughs> Even better, little Ooh. portable DVD player and three DVDs. You brought me your crappy battery powered portable DVD player. And some DVDs. But, but, the DVDs are about space prisons. Oh, uh-huh. I see what you're getting yeah. at now. Okay, right, well, uh, let what me have a wee look at What would you have done with a cell these? phone out here? I don't know. We're probably not close enough to a cell tower, are we, <laughs> to get even reception? And Yeah, good point. I could have done some sci-fi bullshit and boosted the signal with, yeah. like, tinfoil and chewing gum wrappers but I've hey. turned this cell phone into a bomb cool yay that seems bad in space <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> in a pressurized container <laughs> in a vacuum but okay uh, so let's see what you've got here okay so uh, we've got from 2018 we have uh, Claire Denis High Life yeah Ooh. Uh, from the not too distant past <laughs> uh, from the slightly more distant past, we have James Mather and Steve St. Leisure's Lockout from 2012. Ooh. Yep. And then from the far-flung past, or depending on where you're at, and perhaps the far-flung future of the year 2000. Ooh. What a big number. Uh, we have Jeff Murphy's Fortress 2. Yeah. The second Fortress. I well, hope you watch Fortress. Fortress one's anything to go by. Yep. This should be a great movie. Yeah, this should be extremely enjoyable and tell us a lot about imprisonment mm-hmm. and how to extract me from imprisonment. Cool. Well, let's sit down and watch these movies. All right. Cool. Well, uh, they're calling time on on recreation here, so we're not allowed to watch any more films. But luckily, we got them all out of the way just in time Uh, so John why do we have our discussion our little discussion group so I'm going to pretend to do some arts and crafts here (laughs) because that's what they make you do in in the space prison I'm going to make I don't know something sci-fi what would be a cool sci-fi thing for me to make ooh uh, lasers okay I'll make a ooh yeah, I'll make I'll make a laser out of paper mache (laughs) and masking tape okay well while I'm doing that uh, John, what did you think of uh, High Life, d- directed by Claire Denis? Uh, High Life. High Life's a very beautiful-looking movie at times, mm. but I, 
I have issues with the story Ooh. and the characters and yeah. the kind of like internal logic in this movie <laughs> is really broken. And I'm just going to like, I, I kind of watched a few interviews and things with uh, mainly with Claire Denis and uh, Robert uh, Pattison, who is who who is actually really excellent. He's the, probably the best mm-hmm. thing in this movie. His performance is great. It's a good thing that he's the central character. Yeah, anyway. yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I watched a few interviews, um, and some of them it's uh, just normal kind of guff, nothing kind of new, nothing really major mm-hmm. to speak about. But um, still interesting if you if if, if you like th- uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, at one point, and I can't remember who it was an interview with, uh, she mentioned that she wanted she wanted the feel of this. Uh, kind of craft to be different from the usual clean sci-fi stuff and I just went what? I went, really? 2018? I kind of, at, at this point I almost think that it's more of a cliche to have the grittier uh, kind of style of, of spacecraft made popular mm-hmm. by movies like Alien and yeah. you know and, and shows like Firefly and things like that you know, mm. it just it made me kind of think because because it's a genre movie in a sense that you know it's it's space space travel and, and sci-fi yeah. uh do the makers of this like cause she wrote this as well do they have much involvement with this genre because what she said seemed really kind of uh like opposing to what i think of as kind of popular trends in the sci-fi uh, community yeah. and sci-fi like movies in general so i don't know we things like that kind of have have pe- like I, I already had formed my opinions off the movie but we things like that kind of peppered it with like doubts of like i don't think you've had much dealings with this genre yeah maybe like not like too much of a sci-fi head doing yeah a sci-fi movie but i mean that can work i mean like stanley kubrick when you look at him he's yeah. jack of all trades and he did he did so many different styles of things and almost like i mean he did 2001 a space odyssey if you want to talk about clean sci-fi yeah i, I kind of to me it almost feels like that's the, the only sci-fi movie she's watched and went, <laughs> yeah. yep well that's sci-fi for you <laughs> right, so but, you're saying that she didn't want it to be clean sci-fi or did want it to be clean sci-fi like, didn't she wanted like a kind of grittier feeling it's which not like, that that's not what i did at all it <laughs> yeah. looked like i thought you were going to say she really wanted to go for a clean sci-fi aesthetic because that's that's kind of what it that's is what it has like yeah. i mean it that the like the it's it's got those like straight lines and clean surfaces and stuff there's sometimes there are stains here and there but they yeah. usually have just been applied to a wall with someone's face <laughs> yeah the, the, <laughs> the, out, the outside shots always remind me of uh reminds me of like something from like red dwarf or something yeah <laughs> i find that as well but i find that a little bit endearing yeah i i actually quite liked the look of the special effects and the zero g stuff was kind of just the right side of cartoonish for me yeah. The way things moved and the way things floated and stuff, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Because I did actually, I will ultimately say that I kind of did like this movie for the most part. Okay. Um, I think I have a thing for, I have a thing for like a nice, quiet, odd sci-fi movie. Like something like that has like weird explosive moments of violence but is mostly meditative and strange yeah like something like uh like the perfect example of that would maybe be a film called silent running oh yeah uh with uh bruce dern in it about a guy who has like the last trees in the universe and he decides he doesn't want to have to burn them because he i think it's like mission control tell them here right we're abandoning this keep a forest in space thing you just can all come home yeah. and he is so into keeping them alive and he thinks it's just a disgrace so he like goes rogue and goes off into space with this forest dome mm-hmm. and it's just this it's such a it's such a uh it's a lot of, it's one of those films that has a lot of long shots and like extremely long moments of quiet yeah punctuated by panic but then it like always goes back so i kind of like that about this that it did that a fair bit Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there, there was there was definitely good moments in this movie, and yeah. and as I said, the cinematography is is, is great at times. Yeah. Um, 
And like the, as I say, Robert Pattinson's performance and Andre 3000's performance, I enjoyed. Yeah, he's well. great. <laughs> yeah. It, it took me a wee minute to realize it was him. Yeah, same here. Uh, I didn't really realize yeah. till after the fact. I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, because my, my, my fiance pointed it out while well, she was like looking at him and she was just like, is that Andre 3000? And I looked, I, I looked at him and I was like, no. And as soon as he opened his mouth and spoke, I was like, yes, yes, it is him. Because <laughs> I'm not used to seeing him with like, I don't know, he's like, he's got like, maybe it's because he's way older than the last time I would have seen him. Yeah. And maybe. He's, like, he's rocking a beard and uh, like Andre 3000 normally kind of dresses quite flamboyantly so it's like he's just in like his, his orange jump sh- jumpsuit with the beard and uh, yeah he, 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 he was pretty good in this um but uh I, I wasn't really taken with Mia Goth's character no voice. she was a little bit cloying and um yeah I didn't find her very interesting yeah. at all but I, I, I just found I found there was no frame of reference to because they they were trying at at some point to do like the whole you know th- this kind of environment like shipping people in this prison away from Earth and they they've lost all concept of time and stuff like this yeah. and they're almost like becoming bestial or whatever you know yeah. uh, well some of them but I didn't have any frame of reference who these people were or what they were like before they ended up in here to know um so it was hard to kind of really get a grasp of like how they changed you know there was no real no real frame of reference at all for any of them you get a few weird snippets of some kids who have like jumped a train or something yeah um but outside of that is that you don't really get any insight into their characters really no uh, from the kind of people who they were before, they'll sometimes talk about like um, they'll sometimes mention stuff that happened to them, like uh, Robert Pattinson's character sort of tangentially <laughs> talks about how he got landed there in the space prison. Yeah, uh, but it's not really explicit, and you don't get a good sense of the kind of people that they no. are really. Uh, I think I think he does a good job of being like they they do good they could do a good job of being like here's what he's like now yeah and people talk about him like uh, Julia Benoche's character Dibs who's like the weird fertility doctor <laughs> um, who's and, and I put the emphasis on weird there she's a weird fertility doctor yeah um, she's very critical of him because he won't engage with her crazy experiments <laughs> and, 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 and his, the fuck box. <laughs> And the fuck box, which is what they call it, which is yep. just weird, and I don't really understand it a hundred percent. No, uh, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that it's no, this no. weird thing that's never really explained. You get some weird stuff with it where it's like leaking fluid, yeah, and stuff for some reason, and that's very strange. And <laughs> uh, that's not entirely clear. Which is another problem. Like, who who does all the maintenance and like? It, it basically like it shows you that one person yeah can completely maintain and fly this spacecraft yeah. or you know keep it on its trajectory i don't think there's any real uh, control yeah. it seems to just be on autopilot or something but uh despite that like things are going to go wrong <laughs> in a ship. yeah because it does that in media res thing of like it starts sort of at the halfway point in a way where yeah. he is alone with a baby and you're like, why is he alone with a baby? Yeah. You know, and then, like, he seems to be able to run the ship alone. Yeah. Easy enough, for the most part. And I mean, I think, like, you know, there's there's a lot of, like, uh, obviously trying to challenge taboos and, and, and things like yeah. that. Or addressing them, at, at the very least. Mm-hmm. But I kind of think it does a bad job of, like, showing what, <laughs> what it would be like for just for just a father and daughter to be in space alone for yeah. let's say what what age is she like 16 17 she looks towards? to be maybe yeah like at least she's about 15 maybe yeah by the, yeah by the time she is talking and yes, grown up yeah, and stuff know. now they don't do they don't seem to do anything to make robert pattinson look older no at all he looks the same throughout the entire film but i guess we're supposed it's supposed to be like from the earliest we see him on the ship to the latest we see him on the ship it's probably supposed to be about 20 years or so yeah 
and he doesn't age a goddamn day. He just looks the same for the whole thing. Uh, I was able to sort of get over that, but it was niggling at me every yeah, now and then. Yeah. I, I think they, they, he might have a few grey hairs or something, but it's yeah. very, like, very, yeah, downplayed. His salt and pepper, his stubble a little, perhaps, <laughs> yeah. but that's about it. Uh, but I don't really have much of a problem with that, because usually I kind of, like find it a little jarring when they try to artificially age people up and yeah. it always looks yeah, it, bad it doesn't really matter it, it did for yeah. like a moment where it's it is him with with that uh the the, the older daughter like let's, let's say the 15 yeah. year old daughter and i was like kind of going who's this now how did she get on the ship and then it's like oh yeah. no that i i get it now yeah it took me yeah. like a, it yeah. took a few like a few seconds for my brain to change mm. gears and go, no, this isn't the past anymore. Yeah, because they don't have that visual cue of he got older. Yeah. You're like, wait, is this someone who was on the ship and I just didn't notice <laughs> that they were an already established character? But no, it's, yeah, it's like this is the baby grown up, but yeah. it's a bit confusing. But yeah, this film, like, yeah, it, 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 it's trying to say a lot. Yeah. Uh, about uh, people, I guess. And you know i don't know i i i will say i really did enjoy most of the aesthetic of this film yeah because it was quiet and a little strange and it did even though like you were saying about like the dirty sci-fi i felt like it really had that clean sci-fi look yeah for the most oh, yeah. part like to me it- the only thing dirty about it was that they had a room in the middle of the ship <laughs> that had pl- plants and soil in it and that may- didn't feel dirty that that was quite seemed like quite pleasant yeah may- maybe uh, like maybe i picked her up wrong or uh, to, to yeah. know she's speaking a second language to know she is uh, yeah. french to know maybe it was something like lost in translation she, she didn't actually mean what what i took from it but uh yeah you know yeah it was just kind of strange like i do find this to be a very clean ship like yeah it does kind of would have but have more in common with uh 2001 than it would uh with alien or oh yes. anything like that you know and i mean actually I, I, I kept thinking of that like uh that whole starting sequence in alien and and how much better it did it like introducing these characters and making mm. it feel like to know that there's a term that that it kind of more or less started of like these truckers in space where yes. you know space travel isn't that like crazy in, in this not, time it's, it's it's not glamorous or no, out there it's just, it's just, a, just job. a functional yeah it's just a functional thing in alien they're just like they are towing a big thing full of ore back to earth yeah. basically or to wherever it's going to get processed and it's taking them like over a year to do that yeah uh now this this has the same sort of idea of a long haul journey but it's not like in alien they're supposed to spend it in suspended animation whereas in this it's like it's like a weird experiment it's, it's a weird experiment and also like a death sentence yeah it's like they were all sentenced to death maybe already yeah for crimes that maybe don't justify being sentenced to death i don't know yeah. uh it's never really made that clear but uh yeah it's sort of like oh you get to live a bit longer and get flung into a black hole <laughs> oh cool awesome yeah <laughs> But I did kind of enjoy those things about it. The weird black hole stuff I quite liked. Yeah, no, I I, I like those moments as well. Like the the yeah. main gripes I had with it were the the characterizations and the mm. kind of just the, the the I couldn't really get around the get my head around like you know the logic of what was being done of like putting these people like putting prisoners on a ship and yeah. like just like firing it out but again it, it's maybe one of those ones you just just don't think about it's meant it it, it yeah. almost seems like it was just to serve the higher concept which is kind of yeah. you know it's shit that sometimes i just just niggles at me like it, it annoys me <laughs> if that has to be done just to yeah. make your arty movie it's like <laughs> yeah you know what Go fuck yourself. You can still make oh, it logical. But. I guess, yeah, yeah. You, you need to at least have an internal logic. Yeah. And like um, the worst scene, the worst scene in this movie is that random exposition scene on the train. It's a yeah. random, stupid yeah. scene. with, And it's really badly acted as well. It's it like, didn't need to be in there. I think it, it, it feels like it. they deliberately wanted it to look like one of those channel four or like bbc like 1970s education we're going to show this to school kids yeah. thing um or just like this girl interviewing this professor on a train yeah 
And, <laughs> and they're never seen again. And that was it. I thought maybe that was going to be a coda that would come back and then we would get like a bit more information next time and it would make it would illuminate no, something. It was, it, was, like, it, it, it felt so clunky and so out of place. Like It was, it was yeah. literally an exposition scene. It was just yeah. this character explaining the space prison. Yeah. And that was it. And kind of explaining a bit about... Yeah, it's experimental or something, and that, and mm-hmm. I, f- I found the, uh, the, the dog ship to be very strange as well. That was extraneous in the extreme. I yeah. was just like, why? I once that bit ended, mm-hmm. I was like, that was completely unnecessary. Yeah. And again, that that is just to serve the higher art. Let's say you know, that <laughs> oh, is just wow. to, you know because it showed you like all the kind of stronger dogs. Let's say like you know have killed the weaker ones, and uh, uh, it was just like moments like that kind of detracted from the movie more. That yeah. I, I thought you know it it was maybe getting a bit too far up its own hole to, to use a parlance of <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, okay, I will. Go, I think I think there is maybe a. 10 to 15 minute shorter cut of this movie that is better yeah. that excludes <laughs> those parts um but i will say that i actually still really really enjoyed this film i like the atmosphere i i just there was something about the aesthetic that i did really like and i liked all of the way they handled the zero g stuff yeah i just liked because it was so basic in a way yeah of just like things floating in stillness in space and this in a way that's maybe unrealistic but i still find like really nice yeah and like there's a part where he's dumping bodies out airlocks and they're just dropping and i i don't know there was i just find something really like satisfying about him just like (laughs) dropping all these bodies into just dumping them out this fucking hole basically like (laughs) where you go away you go away you go Uh, like i don't know i really liked it um but again, there was some stuff that maybe I don't need explained, but maybe yeah. needed more justified. Okay, so my attempted laser is turned into a sort of a paper mache duck. Uh, John, would you like? Do you want to take this home with you? Oh yeah, go. Ooh. there you go. Space right. souvenirs. I did. Yeah, yeah. It's it. Well, it's it. I mean, all the materials came from Earth, but you know. <laughs> It's it's probably slightly radioactive. It's a I don't space think space souvenir. Yes, it's it's got cosmic rays I- imbued in it because they definitely did not shield this place. <laughs> you know, again, once again, much like the All Ireland Space Station, it seems to have some Campbell suit cans, Campbell suit cans just bolted to the outside. You know, it'll, laid it'll, flat. It'll harden you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it. <laughs> what doesn't kill me makes will make me stronger, except if it's radiation, because that will only make me extremely weak and fragile. <laughs> Uh, but talking about things that are weak, uh, what did you what did you think of James Mather and Stephen St. Leisure's lockout from 2012? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's, Good Lord. Oh, it's desperate. It is. Mm-hmm. It's horrendous. Mm-hmm. It's hard to even get to the end of this movie. It's up bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean. Something I know you'll you'll know a good bit about is that mm-hmm. uh, it's it's basically ripping off. Uh, yep. John Carpenter's work quite a lot. Do, 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 John Carpenter. Yes. Um, Two specific films that John Carpenter made <laughs> that this film shamelessly rips off constantly throughout its runtime. Mm-hmm. I mean, they. I mean, I remember. Okay, let's 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 go back to the heady days of 2012 when we were but we nippers, and when I yeah. say we nippers, we were like I don't know, like 30 nearly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back in 2012, uh, so I remember seeing a trailer for this, yeah, uh, with a friend of ours, um, and just being like, we both were just like, that looks like Escape from New York in space. <laughs> I'll watch that. Ha ha ha. That's probably going to be awful, but maybe it'll be fun. Uh, How wrong you were. Yeah, well, I was wrong about the second part, (laughs) but I was right (laughs) about the first part in buckets because John Carpenter probably saw the trailer for that and was like, that looks like my movie in space. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing is, like, I had read a lot beforehand, uh, like, because I had heard about this all before and thought it was very funny because I saw this film and then I heard, oh, John Carpenter was basically like, uh, you've just ripped me off 
Yeah. Uh, you owe me royalties for writing, using my writing and, and my mate's writing because he co-wrote it with a friend of his. Yeah. Uh, so there's a screenwriter on Escape from New York as well. So what happened was, and like, it's not something that I would usually be annoyed at someone about because I kind of like it when someone does like a homage to a film that they love. Yeah. You know, like, like I, I think I vaguely mentioned it before, but there's a film called Carnosaur 2, which is a <laughs> sequel to a film called Carnosaur that I've never seen. But I've seen Carnosaur 2, and Carnosaur 2 is a huge... It's basically a remake of Aliens, yeah, but with crappy polystyrene dinosaurs instead. <laughs> it has all the same characters and plot points, but if Aliens had no budget and bad actors and a terrible director. And it's, it's because of that... It's this beautiful love letter to aliens that you can sit and enjoy and laugh and be like, this is just like aliens in every single way. And it's funny yeah. that it is. The problem with this film is that Luke Besson is a lying hack <laughs> because he tried to crack. And this this comes up right at the start of the film. It says, based on an original idea mm-hmm. by Luke Besson, which is just a lie. That's lying, yep. Luke Besson. You're a liar. Because it's not an original idea. It's Escape from New York from 1981. And I mean, it's not even... You know, it's not even that great of an idea that like, you'd no. bum and blow about it. No, no. It's not like, oh, this was my idea. And it's like, yeah. Mm. Like, I love Escape from New York. I think Escape yeah. from New York is a great film. The concept of it is it's, it's a good sort of uh, structure. Yeah. Uh, for you to put on your movie of, oh, the entirety of New York has been turned into a prison and this guy has to go in and rescue the president. Yeah. Now, in Escape from L.A., he has to go in and rescue the president's daughter yeah. where L.A. has been made into a prison. So so there's, there's, there's stuff from both of those films in here, which is how you know it wasn't just an accident. Yeah. And the, like, yeah. and LA is like Escape from LA is generally regarded to be fairly terrible. As oh, it's well. like, it's it's bad, but I love watching it. Yeah, because, I was going to say like I can watch it in that kind of yeah. like piss take kind of mm-hmm. uh, attitude yeah. you know it, it's fun yeah at the very it's, least it's the same reason i can watch carnosaur 2 and enjoy it i can watch escape from la and enjoy it because escape from la is basically a remake of escape from new york with a smaller budget and bad <laughs> acting and awful special effects but the, somehow I mean, the, there's also a, th- a thing with escape from uh new york and escape from la the mm-hmm. protagonist played wonderfully by uh kurt russell yes is kind of is likable even yeah. though he's kind of a bit of a dick he's likable yeah. because yeah. kurt russell has just so much charisma you know he it, does. And yeah. he, he just embodies this character and he, he's great whereas i find the main character and like don't get me wrong guy pierce is a very very good actor but he cannot pull off the same thing that kurt russell did no. like this is the guy that just he constantly talks and quips he doesn't have a proper conversation with anyone yeah and he's just a ball bag he's just he is you're right john that is a really good description of him he's just a ball bag <laughs> yeah. he's just an annoying ball bag <laughs> uh, unlike snake pliskin from this gift from new york is just like you, he's, he's fun to watch yeah because he's like he's fed up and he's grumpy, and he's like, like Snake Plissken isn't trying to be clever or funny ever. No. Snake Plissken sits there angrily and smokes, yeah. and like much like they have this guy constantly smoking. I mean, the 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 the, the ways in which they rip off Skip from New York are so myriad. I feel like it's no point in even addressing them. But he sits there, he smokes, he refuses to let them use his real first name. Just like the guy in this, yeah. the way they get to the station is even really similar. The he goes on board and like there's a there's a guy that he knows who's in prison there, just the same way. It, it's it goes on and on and on and on and on with the reasons why it's the same and yeah. the reasons why it fails are all the same things. Where it's like they're just they're ripping it off and they're doing it poorly. Yeah. Um. And thing is, if they had stood up in court and said, John. We made a homage to your movie because we love your movie. Yeah. I would be fine with that. I'd be like, yeah. yes, that's fine. But they didn't. They just knuckled down and insisted, no, this is my movie. And to the point where after they were, what happened was John Carpenter, like going like way overboard, was like, I want 2.4 million, right? <laughs> 
so they were like the judge in the court was like no but it's definitely a ripoff it's a huge landmark case actually because this hadn't really happened before yeah. someone going uh you've you've ripped off this person's movie yeah so he was like the the damages weren't that bad for a movie studio uh, i mean it was 50 grand had to go to studio canal who owned the rights to escape from new york mm-hmm. uh 20 grand to john carpenter and 10 grand to his mate uh who he wrote screenplay with yeah they refused to pay they went back to appeals court they appealed it and at the end of the appeal the appeals judge multiplied all the numbers by five and said right pay that instead <laughs> So, you know, he ended up getting, like, John Carpenter ended up with, like, half a million pounds, or half a million euros, rather, out of this. Yeah, fuck those Uh, guys. Yeah. Because they just rip off stuff. Like, it's not a very well-made film. It's okay. It's competent enough. Uh, I think the special effects in it are kind of crappy, but whatever. The bit on the bike. Yeah, the the beginning. The future bike, and oh, God, it looks so bad. Yeah, I was like, this is 2012, right? Oh, no. And that's that's kind of when you realize what you're in for, and you're like, oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then you just sort of sit there and wait. And it's just the dialogue is atrocious consistently. So, from so start the, to finish the, the, the fights as well i find to be very like uh that i mean this is around the time that the born uh the jason Bourne movies kind of Aye. made the the choppy like overly edited fights um mm-hmm. popular and this utilizes that at certain points and it, it's it's horrible it's terrible say they're way less competently than paul yeah. greengrass <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean it, it it worked for for born but yeah maybe maybe the first one even like the the even the sequels were kind of like okay, like this is played out. I, I'd pref- mm. I prefer to actually see my action and see what's happening. Than <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it yes. was better than Time Cops cuts, but <laughs> that's almost an insult now that I've just brought up Time Cop and I mean it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but that's the thing. Like, even if uh, even if John Carpenter had never made uh, Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. and this movie yeah. just came out and it was this original concept and blah 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 it's still a crappy movie it's still it done is, yes. very badly yeah even if it wasn't a ripoff it would still be boring yeah. and poorly written and uh badly edited um and just i mean i mean i cannot stress enough how shit the dialogue is <laughs> it is and I'm, so, I'm sorry for getting angry and they say but it is it is really bad dialogue mm mm-hmm. mhm it's so bad. It's insultingly bad. And all of his quips are excruciating. Like, <laughs> I felt my skin crawling. And I, I felt for Guy Pierce. Like, there's so many good actors in this. <laughs> like, Peter Stormare is That's in right, it. And I forgot, I love I forgot him. he was in it. Because yeah. my wife kept, like, going, what is Peter Stormare doing in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but, I mean, he has been in a bunch of crap. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's... Yeah, he's usually he's really... went for the paycheck as much as anyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but he's usually when he's in things, he's usually watchable. In this, he's not even like. I mean, you even forgot he was in it. Yeah, I, I kind know? of my 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 brain just like blanked the fact that he was in it. Yeah, because like the the t- our two lead sort of villains, I've seen them in other things and they're great. Yeah, um, they're they're two. Well, one of them I think is an Irish guy. I don't know if he's actually Scottish. The the wiry guy. Yeah. Uh, the, the kind of crazy one the yeah the kind i think of he's they're one. supposed to be scottish brothers one of them is scottish i think and the other guy's irish but he's playing scottish he does all right his accent slips here and there yeah um but he's mostly great in fact he's probably the best thing in the film <laughs> yeah. he's the most interesting thing in the film but he's overwritten in a way to be this sort of unhinged unpredictable guy he plays it well but it's yeah. still just like you still watch he's, it going he, he's actually he's, english he was uh is he english all oh, right in Lang, Lang, lancashire, lancashire sorry. all right see so i just assume because he did he has played he was in the uh he was in preacher the tv show yes. which was not a great show but he was brilliant in it and he's playing an irish vampire in that and his accent as far as i was concerned in that was flawless oh, cool. so i just assumed he was an irish guy there I, you go I, I did kind of i had this moment in this movie where uh before i realized they were brothers in in the in the fiction yeah <laughs> it just seemed to me that all the convicts were scottish and it's like what the hell is this like some <laughs> kind of weird racist message they're trying to put out yeah. that all convicts are scottish and then 
once the reveal happens, like, uh, okay, yeah, I get yeah. it. Right. <laughs> no, I saw that one coming. I saw that one coming about five seconds before he said it. I I wasn't really. I, I think, was like, it's his I, brother. I think I, my my brain is, was just trying to switch off through the whole thing. Yeah, I had to like, I keep <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of trying to uh, shock it and to staying awake. You made a good decision there, I think. <laughs> yeah, because this film's terrible. Um, it ends so badly and so stupidly. And you want to talk about logic? Oh. We were talking about logic in in High Life. I mean, High Life is a goddamn masterpiece, especially compared to this. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. High Life is a masterpiece of logical consistency, even though High Life had some serious logical inconsistencies. Yeah, I mean, this film. Yeah, that, you know, even the fact that the the main antagonist that, like somehow manages to to take take control of the prison. Yeah. in an instant like no one yep. no one questions them they, like they know yep. the, how many there's thousands of these convicts and it's just no just like that mm-hmm. um but actually you know what we've done this before where you could literally pick any scene or any any part of this movie and the, there would mm-hmm. be no logic in it um yeah i think the the biggest thing to take away is they you know there's it's it's ugly looking mm-hmm kind of well b- badly acted because the actors really didn't have much to go on. yeah th- there are people who are going for it and you feel like you feel like guy pierce is leaning into it in a way but what he's leaning into isn't great no you know he's trying to be this clever quippy like cool action hero guy and it feels like someone pretending to be a clever, quippy, cool action hero guy. Yeah. Like, his smirk is just sort of annoying after a while. <laughs> and the things he says just make you want to punch him in his face. Like, I think, like, the, the best the best stuff is around the Scottish criminals. Yeah. And, unfortunately, like, their dialogue has been written by the same people who wrote the rest of the dialogue. <laughs> so, they're suffering from that. Um, President's daughter is basically no one. She's nothing. She's barely a character at all. Yeah. Um... And like everyone's barely a character. The president's not a character. The president's just a president. You know, I, was, I, I was actually about to say I don't even think he he properly appears, but he does. Yeah, he, he does. He's he does. But it. again, much like Peter Stormare, you forgot about him. Yeah, because he was so forgettable. I, just, I, just I, think, up. I think my brain's already like deleting this movie as we're talking. Yeah. As as you say things, they're just spilling out of your head, <laughs> never to come back. If you which, come back to me in a week and go, oh, do you remember Lockout? I'll be like. No, I've what's, never seen that movie in my life. What's what's Lockout? Oh, you should watch it. Why don't you go watch it now? It's really good. Yeah. So no, I mean, the, 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 there's there's just huge problems with physics and everything in this movie, and like they just happen to crash into the International Space Station. Just <laughs> space is huge. The orbital orbiting around the Earth it's a huge. And the idea that you would accidentally just crash into the one thing that is like really prop big thing that's orbiting around there is just ridiculous. Also, apparently the atmosphere of the Earth is like 20 feet deep. Yeah. So that's a problem. Uh, now, that's not the biggest problem with the film, but that was the last problem with the film <laughs> that I had. So it just stuck in my head. I feel like it's it's extremely relevant to their escape. So I feel like it's relevant to this. And it's just not practical. No. It just doesn't make any sense. It's nothing to that at all. Yeah, this is this is a bad movie. It's, yeah, it's yeah. I I couldn't recommend this to anyone. It, it it's not even. <laughs> you know, we might get it here uh, next. Uh, not even one of those movies that you can kind of get a bit of fun out of how ridiculous and stupid it is. This one. Oh my! Doesn't John. really even have that. No, it doesn't. And you're showing your hand now, so I feel like we should get going <laughs> and yeah. move on to something we can all enjoy. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, it's uh, yard time now, and we're down here. I don't know why they've let you out into the yard with me. You're only supposed to be pris- visiting me in in space prison. Uh, but here we are in our space suits, walking around outside in the yard. <laughs> Which, you know, the artificial, the magnets in our boots are holding us down really well here. And, like, there's some, we could go do some jump rope, or there's, like, a weight set over there. But the weight set doesn't really do anything because we're in space and it's weightless. Yeah. Uh, but you can move your arms up and down, and you can feel you, real you can, strong. Yeah, you can look really strong. <laughs> yeah, you can pick these up, and you can pick these up and put them. Look, look, see, you can pick them up and put them down. This thing's friggin' huge, and up you are. Yeah, well, I'm a briefcase, yeah, but I am actually quite literally wasting away to nothing. I feel like my muscles are atrophying as we speak. So before I turn into a horrible space bone man, <laughs> uh, let's have a little chat 
and figure out what we can learn from Jeff Murphy's Fortress 2 from the year 2000, John. Ooh. 2000. Yeah. Oh, that's a sci-fi year if ever I heard one. Yeah. Yeah. It was 21 what? years ago. It was 21 fucking years ago. <laughs> we were uh, 16. Yay. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, what did you think about the great Fortress 2, John? Oh, tell me all God. about it. I love Fortress. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there you go. I love Fortress 1. All right, 1. cool. <laughs> I really like Fortress 1 as well. It has the most hilariously short labor in cinema history. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can't really talk about uh, Fortress 2 without talking about uh, Fortress 1. Um, because you'll go mad. Because <laughs> if you just talk about Fortress 2. <laughs> Because it's got the number right, the right at the end there. Um, it's it, because it's mainly it's one of these like <laughs> real uh, committee made um, movies where like someone has come in, and I might be able to name this person <laughs> actually. Someone oh, has really? come in and went right. We should make another fortress. This is like eight years <laughs> after the the first fortress was made. Uh-huh. How how can we make it even even better? Like how do we raise the stakes in it? Let's put it in space. Yeah. Um, because and I'm saying this because if you look up the writers of this, there mm-hmm. is a producer yes. who, who only has three writing credits to his name, and they're Fortress Two, The Veteran, and Cyborg Soldier. Oh um, wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, so the producer John <laughs> Flock, I think, was the uh-huh. one who came up with this idea. You and think then, he's responsible for? <laughs> let's just put it in space. Just put it in space. That's that's how you ramp up anything. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it it loses so much of like what made Fortress special. Like Fortress Fortress One tries to do so much, and it's by no means the like a perfect movie or anything. But it is mm-hmm. very enjoyable and has yeah yeah a lot the, going for it. The concept of someone describing the first Fortress movie as a perfect movie almost short circuits my brain. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoy Fortress. Yeah. Uh, I mean it's. I think in large part, the same way when we were talking about the Mortal Kombat movie, there is a huge amount of, um, let's say, cachet that is brought with someone like Christopher Lambert, where you're like, you already know, usually, like, we already know going in, I like Christopher Lambert, I like his style, I like his laugh. I like the way he sort of smirks and stuff like that. When we were watching Beowulf, it was really disappointing because he didn't do any of that. Yeah. There's a bit of it here. He did the but laugh, which is important. He does, yeah, he does laugh at one point, which he did not seem to do during Beowulf, which made Beowulf interminably long and <laughs> awful. Uh, whereas this movie, he does have a bit of a sense of humor, his character. Yeah, um, yeah, he t- yeah exactly. John, you've got that nailed now. That's brilliant. Um, but yeah, this movie's just... It felt... Now, talking about things that are interminable, it did feel extremely long for me uh it felt extremely cheap um (laughs) i recognized a fair few people in it but not necessarily from anything good no um like pam greer is in this and i don't know why (laughs) she's in it except that they just could get pam greer because her character does nothing yeah nothing at all she like gets, she may as well not she be gets there punched and apparently the uh the, the actress liz may bryce uh knocked her out cold when she did that seriously she actually I'm, punched knocked out pam greer that's terrible <laughs> yeah. um this, i mean see see to be honest uh anything i say about this movie take with a grain of salt because trying to look up stuff about this movie like the, the behind the scenes and all that is is virtually mm. impossible. You just get a lot of Team Fortress that comes up. Yeah, I find that as well. Whenever I was like even trying to find the film to watch it, yeah, I was getting all these Team Fortress things. Like, I don't want anything to do with Team Fortress. Yeah, I wrote Christopher I wanna, Lambert. I want Christopher Lambert. Yeah, I mean, it was an easy thing to get over. But like, as far as like finding actual information about it, yeah, it is yeah, it's few and far between. So like I, I, I mean, I'm I'm reading that uh, Pam Greer was knocked out cold from the IMDb. I don't yeah. know if that's true. The but my favorite bit of trivia, and I've told you this already, but mm. is is that apparently the catering for the movie comprised entirely yes. of soup. 
that is incredible. That's one of the main reasons I actually wanted to watch this film is that you told me that and I nearly died. <laughs> Christopher Lambert was part of a was he a, an a radical? It says here a radical nutritional cult. <laughs> But I love that he subjected the rest of the cast and the crew to this. So, like, everyone had to just eat soup. It was just wild. Oh, Chris. Oh, oh Chris. Oh, dear. Oh, Chris. Um, this... Apparently, that's in a, a 2012 oh. Sight and Sound interview, um, uh-huh. which I didn't get a chance to really kind of dig into and try and find, but mm. uh, I might do that after this, actually, just to confirm it and just to read uh, that interview, because if oh, I, I want to wonderful. know what else went on with this. I believe in it hard enough now that I've just, it's for me, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, no matter, it's, it's that uh, kind of uh, the... Uh, what do you call it? Mental dissonance? No, it's not. Uh, uh, Ludo narrative dis. Ludo what? No, the, the uh, basically, I'll not believe you even if you show me that it's not true. Because oh it'll yeah, just, it'll, it'll just not work with it's, my brain. It's already in there and it's lodged in, and yeah. now it's fact. Yeah, there's not a lot of supplementary material for this movie to explore. <laughs> no, uh, there is a DVD of it which I was not willing to buy. <laughs> <laughs> because damn i love the cover of it's terrible uh it's just his big face he's on the cover <laughs> twice yeah. it's his big face and then he's also standing there on the cover which is fun yeah um so they do some stuff with this movie where they try to sort of echo the first film in a way but you say echo i say ape <laughs> ape okay ape. We'll <laughs> they go try ape. They're, or rip off <laughs> yeah this is like, very much uh, a lockout scenario only they're ripping off in- the the predecessor, yeah. the better predecessor. Of it's the- almost <laughs> an Escape from LA scenario, yeah. really. Yeah, which actually, is the same thing, better, really. Yeah. yeah, it's basically hitting, hitting the sort of all the same sort of plot beats in a way. Like, I mean, you've got uh, obviously he comes into the prison. People are adversarial towards him. He sort of makes friends with violence. Uh, and, by- I mean, the the thing is, though, with, just when you're saying with the with the friends, you know, yeah. in the first one, they they do a good enough job where. You know they characterize those guys well enough. I mean, you've got yeah. uh, Abraham, the the kind of butler guy, to the 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 guy running the prison, um, mm-hmm. and like he he's very kind of standoffish almost with with uh, Christopher Lambert's character, and that's that's this is all in the first one. But yeah. in this, they don't really do any work with the friends with these like uh, bodies that he has. A couple no. of them are people that he already knew who just happened yeah. to get arrested around the They're, same time. Yeah, he got pre-packaged uh, prison buddies, yeah. basically, so Which, he doesn't have to go and earn prison respect. Yeah, and it's 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 really cheap and it's really yeah, like it's just bad writing. It, yeah, I also noticed a similarity between this and uh, Lockout, and <laughs> that they have a character who has, because of one thing or another, has become essentially like cartoonishly mentally deficient yeah oh yeah uh, i mean they did this in lockout as well in a way that was just annoying and rubbish and it's annoying and rubbish in this as well yeah uh where he's but he's somehow the key the things he's saying are relevant and uh, it's the kind of the same way that they they try to use uh people with aspergers in hollywood yeah to pretend like these people are super super intelligent computer people because we <laughs> watched Rain Man and we decided that that just was an easy get out absolute nonsense yeah uh so that's basically how they that Stanley is the character in yes, this yeah and it's just annoying and tedious when he's on screen it's like it's like one of those really bad crappy channel 5 sci-fi shows uh, where you're watching it and someone's trying to act like weird and it's just embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like what was that one? There was one called Lex with like two X's or something. <laughs> yes, yes I was remember. One of the, I vaguely was, remember that. <laughs> it was so awful. But that's what this film mostly reminded. The aesthetic of this film reminded yeah. me of that. Um, like the bad special effects and the way things would just happen and the terrible acting and awful dialogue. And oh, I mean. There were points in this movie where I was laughing and being like, okay, this is kind of fun. Yeah. But they were few and far between. And it just felt like uh, the most of the time I was like, what? 
I mean, why? Mo- mo- most of the time, most of the time, it is just Fortress One did this better. Fortress, yeah. Fortress One had this an entire like sequence in it, and you're just doing it, but doing it really badly. And I mean, mm. even the even the antagonist, the 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 guy running the prison the in the warden, first one, yeah. it's. It's it's very well done. He's characterized quite well, and he, you know his motivations, and he's kind of yeah. creepy, and you find out uh, all creepy. this like weird shit about him. Yeah. This guy, the, the the warden in this, is just kind of boring. He's yep. just he's boring and he's generic, and he's he's actually a Bond villain. Yeah, his motivations are Bond villain motivations. Like in the first one, it was weirdly personal. Yeah. Where he was like becoming obsessed with Brennick's wife. Yeah. Who had who was like pregnant and was in the prison and he had her living with him and stuff and he was this weird like clone guy or something in the first yeah. one that had been brought up by the company and like there was something weirdly creepy and actually really fascinating about that. Yeah. And that interaction whereas in this it's like I'm building a space laser. <laughs> I'm building a space laser and Pam Greer doesn't like that I'm building a space laser. And, and it also happens to be like, oh, if, if you destroy this uh, space prison, you've basically destroyed this big company because this is their yeah. th- this is their source of power. I was like, hi? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's their source of, I think they meant power literally, like electricity. But again, hi? I don't S- know. Solar, maybe, I don't know. I, I, again, yeah. we probably shouldn't try and look too deeply in, yeah. in the... Um, I mean, because you've got the 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 hole as well that he gets put in the, which I kind right. of like the idea of the new- conceptually. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Conceptually, that's great because he's like he's being exposed to UV rays and stuff like that, but he's also being exposed to the coldness of space at the same time. Yeah, and I I really like that. But it went on and on and on and on and on, <laughs> and then they had voiceover narration basically of like people talking somewhere else about it. Yeah. <laughs> About like, oh, he's lasted longer than expected. Of course, he's, of course, he's he, lasted longer than expected. He's the he's the protagonist, so he's too cool to die. <laughs> basically, <laughs> is what they're saying over the footage of him going ah, and frost on his face and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, and I mean that that, that to, to me that was just like them trying to think of a different way to because you had the mind wipe thing in the first one, um, yeah, which he's in for like days, and they're like. There's a reason he gets taken out of it, um, and he's not superhuman mm. in that one because it's like uh, the, the the antagonist literally says to his wife like another another day and his his brain will be mush. Which yeah, it kind of is anyway. Yep. Yeah, and it's like it, it, it's also a rip off of the bridge over the river Kwai because in <laughs> yes, that yeah there's the box oh yeah you get put in and the, as you you have to stay in this tin box yeah in the sun and it basically cooks you while you're in there they're they're basically doing that yeah uh but you know with a, with a bit of a twist on it which oh, is I'm, fine. I'm not talking about real films here no 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 <laughs> we're talking about fortress and fortress 2 yeah so i yeah the whole way through this i was thinking and now you did the wise thing you did watch fortress one yeah beforehand i have seen fortress one a few times yeah. so i knew where i was at plot wise but the whole time I was watching this, I was like, I really wish I was watching Fortress One <laughs> yeah. instead. Because it's, it's better. It's not necessarily like high art cinema, but it's fun yeah. and it's stupid and it's watchable. It's fun. And and there, there's definitely, like we've said this before, about like there's definitely passion went into the first one. This, yeah. especially with this uh, uh, producer, John Flock, like it seems like it it, it is just been a business decision of like that oh. first one did well you know we can make these movies fairly cheaply i'm i'm assuming they're they're fairly cheap because it looks cheap it looks um. <laughs> like it cost nothing yeah you know so and then and all of the catering was soup so it's <laughs> probably really cheap <laughs> yeah exactly you know, they, they saved a lot of money on the catering um, <laughs> yeah. but you know <laughs> It does have its moments though, where it's kind of funny. Like the, mm-hmm. <laughs> my favorite bit has to be the the code that the Russians use, um, to talk to each other when they're playing chess. Yeah, it's like it's just the words that they say while they're touching the queen. But but they make it out like I think is it is it the the uh, 
it's Christopher Lambert's friend who is actually, you know, undercover and trying to like yeah, sort out these guys. But he goes, oh, it's like I'm paraphrasing there, but it's like a really complex way of communicating. It's almost impossible to decode or something like that. <laughs> and then it just shows you them like you touch the queen when you want to say what you mean, and that's yeah. it. And then when <laughs> when Christopher Lambert plays against them, he's like, I need to practice some moves. I hope this doesn't spaceship my <laughs> you know yeah, he's, he yeah, like, it doesn't make any sense yeah. it's completely unsubtle yeah, and I, I can't just... remember what he actually says but it's like yeah it's garbled nonsense when he's saying it <laughs> so that anyone who was listening in would be like he's definitely talking in code <laughs> yeah. but uh no that like there's there's wee moments like that that just kind of make it so bad it's good kind of watch watchability like to you know it has yeah. that kind of I can sit and have a bit of a laugh with this movie where I yeah. couldn't have with Lockout. There was something just no. that just seemed that wee bit impenetrable or, or it, does, it just didn't seem lighthearted enough or something. Yeah, the Fortress 2 was always on the edge for me for being the so bad it's good thing. Yeah. But I feel like for me it never quite reached the tipping point. Yeah. It was always just sort of dull and also like really like unnecessarily just exploitative as well there's just a lot of scenes of people in shars yeah that's weird and then like the people watching them being like yeah being creeps the the guards just being super creeps yeah all of the guards are terrible except one guy who's just altruistically wonderfully good yeah who's a guy who actually i know better is playing villains really so it was hard (laughs) for me to get over that and I saw his face. Uh, he's done a lot of TV work. I think he was like the yellow-eyed demon in Supernatural. That's right, yeah. So he was like the main antagonist for like the first three years of that show. I, I, re- uh, I actually weirdly recognize him more for... He, he was in Fire... He was in one episode of Firefly. He was, wasn't he? And it was kind of a similar role to this, this one where like he, he was like a kind of good guy working for the kind of questionable mm. authorities he's working for the bad guys yeah. and questioning his orders yeah that kind of thing yeah which he does a lot in this but like i feel like that also kind of came to nothing yeah like they they just he helped them out in a few fights he helps him out in a fight and then he helps them out later in a fight and a guy ends up in a big oven and blows up and <laughs> <laughs> it's real stupid and like it's just there was never any sort of crescendo to that no subplot no. i feel like it just didn't the- really there, there was a whole itself? like there, there's a whole like video game ending uh, to it where like the spaceship is literally blowing up around them and yet mm-hmm. the bad guys are still focused just on killing Christopher Lambert. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. The spaceship's exploding and there's nothing at this point. They can't even stop it. It's like no, we we'll have to kill him. It's like, yeah, really? and there's a point where they're like he's telling a guy to like you have to seal off this section and the guy the guy can't do it and he just walks up and turns a wee valve and like <laughs> there, it's done. <laughs> Like, what? That was you. You came up with all this drama and stuff, and then you didn't pay it off. You just went, nope, done. Yeah, it's like right, okay. That's this whole film actually for me <laughs> yeah. is that. It's like they're, they're trying to set up all this interesting stuff, and none of it pays off at all. Yeah, and then it just sort of ends. Oh yeah, I just the end of it's terrible. He, he just, just appears. Oh, although that, he just I, appears I, in full hiking gear <laughs> on Earth, and I was like, wait, what happened? <laughs> I, I I did enjoy like every time they showed his uh, wife and kid running like they must mm. have been running in that field for about mo- like for a month yeah. solid like because it was supposed to be like this is happening right now but they never get out of the one field no, <laughs> no. <laughs> they're just running in circles around that field not a bit yeah. of wonder they needed him indeed <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Fortress Two not as good as Fortress One no just but- just watch Fortress One. Just watch Fortress 1. Okay, well, the screws are getting ornery now, um, and they may be calling a close to visiting ours, so um, uh, I need to, we need a plan, and we need a quick, because I don't want to live in a space prison. Um, so, John, even though that's a very pressing thing, yeah, uh, I, I, I just can't move on without knowing which of these ones did you think was the best movie? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, the three of them really didn't grab me. I, sp- I suppose, I mean, High Life, 
does have it, it's the better looking one and it is yeah you know there's there's enough to grasp on to that that it, it does elevate it above well, it's weird to say that elevate yeah. it above lockout and fortress 2 yeah um but yeah i mean the cinematography is great uh mm-hmm. as you said earlier if maybe you tri- trimmed 20 minutes or so off it it would probably be a better movie to me um to get rid of the superfluous scenes and, and those scenes that kind of don't make much sense but um yeah, yeah I suppose that that's it really I mean the other two what can you really say about them they're kind of bad decisions they're they're bad bad <laughs> movies they that are, are bad. better movies you know yeah they are they're both they're both crappy ripoffs of significantly better films yeah yeah I don't think for me there's no competition this like high life is easily <laughs> the best of these films I, I I would say overall I think I really liked high life yeah uh, as a whole uh, again, there's some problems with I it here I don't, and there. I don't think I would but... watch it again. Is my only thing. No. Mm. I, I did enjoy. Like I've, I've probably been very negative about it, but uh, that's just me. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I did enjoy it for the most part. Um, it was just I, some of the stuff that we've talked that we, we talked about earlier. Like to you know some of that, and just the fact that it seemed to be. It was trying too hard to be this kind of a terror piece rather than just like explore these uh, exp- explore these issues in in a kind of realistic way or or in an interesting way. But mm-hmm. um, you know, at, at the end of the day, yeah, it, it's not terrible. Like it's it's just not something I can see myself putting on in the near future. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think it's really good. I think yeah. it's like I like it. it's extreme. I think it's very technically well made. Yeah, very much so. Um, I did quite like. I mean, I thought it was it was pretty well written as well. As far as like the dialogue and stuff went, was grand. Um, performances, I think, were pretty good across the board. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Robert Pattinson was brilliant in this. Julia Binoche was brilliant in this. Yeah, I mean she's um, always great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's 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 very consistently great. And and actually, it, it seems so is Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Ever since he stripped off the Twilight yeah, stigma, <laughs> now that he's clawed his way f- from friggin' I was gonna say J.K. Rowling there, that would have been incorrect. <laughs> Well, um, he was in, he was in those as well, wasn't he? He, he was, was he was Cedric Diggory. I oh believe my was his God, name's right. character. I know. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that because I didn't see the ones he was in until after I had seen him in something I liked. Yeah, and then I saw that one. It was and the then school the sports stuck. day one. Yeah, it was the school sports day Harry Potter one. That yeah. People get annoyed when I call it the school sports day one. That's exactly what it is. I'm it's not, the Harry Potter and School Sports Day. So he's in that one. Um, Fortress of Solitude? Uh, yes, sure. Harry yes. Potter and the Fortress of Solitude. Harry Potter hangs out with Superman at the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was. I remember in that one going, here, there's him. And then I just remembered that that was his character's name because people said it like five times. Yeah. And then they dispose of him. Spoilers for Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, but but like, it, like, he's it, a great it, actor. Yeah, he's, it seemed that... Uh, Twilight and all that was a business decision and fair play to him because it worked out well. It's I, I don't think anyone has anything him and uh uh, uh what do you call her who Kristen plays the, Stewart. Yes, uh the, they both kind of take the piss out of those movies now, yeah. which you know how can you not? But um, yes, yeah, I mean as as speaking as we have both seen all of those films <laughs> as well, which is insane. Yeah. Talk I, about like going out of your way to watch bad movies. I, like I mean, I mean, oh, I watched it with Brief Tracks. It was, yes, it was enjoyable because because of that very fact. But, yeah, um, in fact, it was one of the best uh, movie watching experiences I think I ever had <laughs> because I watched it with the Riff Tracks on it. Yeah, it was wonderful because it's a movie that almost seems specially designed to give the Riff Tracks guys stuff to work with. Yeah, and long. Or long sort of stretches of silence for them to fill, yeah. Because like most of those Twilight movies are just are just empty space. But he has been brilliant in so many films since, yeah. Uh, to the point where I mean, like like uh, the Lighthouse was one of my favorite films of like the last ten years. Yeah, I think it's absolutely brilliant. He's in a great one called as it's Cosmopolis. I keep 
messing up the name. Is that the David, David Cronenberg one? Yeah. Yeah, he was really good in that. that. Yeah, I need to actually see that. He was really good in that. So, like, I Julia mean, Pinochet's in that as well. Isn't uh, she? Yes, yes, she is. Yeah, she was in that too. So, like, he's a really good. He's he's kind of pulled the Leonardo DiCaprio, where <laughs> yeah. he's been this like teen heartthrob for a wee while, and now he's like. I'm going to go be an actor. I'm going to do a bunch of indie movies and work with really interesting yeah. directors that are outside the mainstream, which is exactly what this is. Yeah. You know, this film is very much an outside. She's a very much a, an outsider yeah. uh, director uh, in the same way that like Robert Eggers, who made The Lighthouse and The Witch, which is also one of my favorite films of the last 10 yeah. years. Um, like well, like I, I would say, you know, he's been very clever with it because yeah. he, he went and he did the the twilight shit he got a massive fan base yeah and then he got a bit of weight behind him Mm -hmm. so that studios want him he will put horses in seats and then as you say he he because he he actually he he looked for claire denis because he he seen her movie uh oh uh, white uh i can't remember the name of it now (laughs) um Anyway, he he seen one of her movies and white material. That's it. Um, mm-hmm. and he he loved it so much that he he kind of tracked her down. He wanted to work with her, and he wasn't her first pick for this either. You know, mm. uh, they even looked at Daniel Craig and stuff, but she, oh, wow. uh, she said he he didn't really fit the role she had in mind. And once yeah. they met, and he he read up on string theory and things like this because he wanted to kind of impress her and go i'm really oh, serious wow. about this role and he got it and he he cool. is the best thing in this movie yeah he is, he's, bre- he's, 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 he's great in this film like julia banosh is brilliant as well yeah. and andre 3000 is of course great too yeah. um but he's the focal point and it's i mean it, it's it, it does revolve around him yeah i mean he's the first character we meet um and it's it always it's always going back to him caring for this baby and then going back into the past and yeah. jumping around but it's always following him and he carries it so well yeah and he is just he's got charisma you know he he's does, got quiet yeah. he has a quiet charisma that if you watch the twilight movie you can't see <laughs> yeah. you can't see anyone anyway. it's almost like those those movies were specifically he was on or something he was, he was just like yeah. st- or stoned out of his head or something when he's doing I think twilight. everybody they must have put something in the goddamn <laughs> catering to just zonk everybody out for those films yeah. because everybody looks tired and bored and distracted or the it, you know what? Of those the, films. I know what happened. They were given the script. <laughs> <laughs> They'd already signed up for it, and they were like, "Oh, <sighs> oh no!" How many millions? Is, ugh, really? Ugh. Uh, but this is very, is very, very. It? This is very quickly becoming a Twilight review, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. Except to say that Twilight is very, 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 very bad. Yeah. But if you watch it with the riff tracks, it's very, very, <laughs> very, very good. I think we uh, should. <laughs> I, I also want to know, uh, to, to know after watching these three movies, and you know, you you, you were taken with High Life a lot more th- than I yeah. was. Um, I, I still, I, I don't hate it. I'd, I'm mm-hmm. just maybe just a very negative person because I'm <laughs> just kind of always have to like oh, turn Not apart. Not usually, I don't <laughs> think, but maybe, maybe just this week. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, I I do have to wonder how. You, how are we not like overrun with space prison movies? No, how is there not like yeah. more good space prison movies? Yeah, we find it like a little like sort of you know look behind the curtain here, but <laughs> actually find it really difficult to find space prison movies. I mean, it's it's kind of how we ended up landed with Lockout because <laughs> yeah. I would have liked to avoid doing Lockout if I could. Fortress Two, I had a curiosity about because I hadn't seen it before. Yeah. Uh, and I'd seen Fortress, and I knew I liked Fortress, so we probably would have ended up with that. And High Life is a film that I have been waiting. I just never got around to it from when it came out, and I really wanted to see it. Uh, but, like, we probably would... If we could find something else, but it, it just seems like there, it's there not... Was one, there, there, there was one more, but I don't think it would have been yeah. much better. It was uh, the the stunt guy, Scott, Scott Atkins, is it? Yeah. Um, th- there was a space one that we, we had it down in the list. 
<laughs> at one point, but I don't think it's meant to be that great either. I forget the name no. of it. But yeah, that was the only four that we really had. Yeah, it was hard to find space prison films, and it's such a cool concept. They have featured in other films. Yeah. But in like a minor way, like uh, Gardens of the Galaxy, they end up in a space prison. Yes, but yeah, that's it's true. like a small part of the film. It's like, it's maybe like. 10 or 12 minutes yeah and it's basically just an excuse for an action escape scene it's 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 basically well uh, for the story it's how they yeah. all kind of meet and yeah. go, oh we work well together and yeah they, they mm-hmm. utilize it well but yeah, yeah it doesn't qualify it as a space prison movie unfortunately because yeah. it's <laughs> it's such a short so there, time of the film there you go hollywood make more space prison movies we'll watch yeah. it because we're fucking idiots <laughs> we'll watch it because we're desperate <laughs> Yeah, uh, but that being the case, then John, uh, which of these movies do you think uh, gives us the best advice of how to get me the hell out of space prison, please? Yeah, well, like because in in lockout, he just sort of jumps out the side. <laughs> it's kind of like it's that joke again. I hate to bring up Bill and Ted again, but. Well, I don't hate to bring it up. I love to bring it up. But <laughs> there's that joke in Bill and Ted where they're like, they're in the phone booth and it's going really fast and it's falling down. And Bill and Ted are standing in the open doorway of the phone booth. Yeah. And they're like, oh no. And I think it's Ted says, when we're a foot from the ground, jump. <laughs> yeah. That's basically how they get out of the space prison <laughs> in lockout. Yeah. Because as far as lockout's concerned, the atmosphere is about 20 feet deep mm-hmm. uh, from top to bottom. Because like, from the time he jumps out of the space prison to the time he hits the ground, it's probably about 12 seconds yeah. at the most. <laughs> uh, it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, none of that. crazy. They, they, have no, they don't really have any of that. They address it for a second. It seems like it gets a wee bit hot and then they're fine. <laughs> yeah. And then they just grind, and then he just opens a glider, which is also a thing that is used in the skiff from New York. Um, yeah. And then, and then they just land on a motorway, and then they're grand. Um, in Fortress Two, how do they escape in Fortress Two? They, uh, they, just... they kind of steal a ship because that's yeah. that's the whole uh, you know talking to the Russians. Uh, and so... there's a fake out with a ship that gets blown up with space laser or something, and then. Yes, the, oh the yeah, Russians they escape with that, and then I forget where they get the ship. Yeah, I th- is it Pam Greer's one? ship? Maybe, maybe I think it's Pam Greer's ship. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, well, anyway, High, High Life doesn't count because they don't actually escape. They possibly yeah. die. Well, it's not really. Yeah, I I like a bit open ended. Yeah, I actually like the way it ends because yeah, it yeah, doesn't it's... really matter, and they just have a nice little moment. Yeah. I think the fact that they go towards having just a nice moment at the end of the film is for me like you don't need some kind of great dramatic conclusion. Yeah. They just have this we sort of they they share a moment and that's enough. Yeah. And then whatever happens next you can fill in. It's another one of the things I like about this movie. I'm coming around on this I like this movie on its own, but the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, I did really like this movie a lot. <laughs> I think I think it might stick with me. I don't know if I'll watch it again, but there's a bunch of films I love that I'll never watch again. Yeah, you know, like yeah, I'll cool. never watch The Deer Hunter again, but it's wonderful. I've, it's I've already watched film. that way too many times. Yeah. I think I've I only saw watched it, once. it three times. I saw it once, and I remember when I picked it up, being like, this tape's really... It was on VHS. Yeah. I remember picking it up going, this tape's really heavy. <laughs> this tape's heavier than tapes usually are, Ooh. because it was so long. Oh, yeah. yeah so many, and also, yeah. like, conceptually, it's very heavy. It's a really heavy subject it's, matter, yeah. and there's a lot of long takes in it that make it feel really long, and let's not review The Deer Hunter here, but it is a very good <laughs> film, and if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. You should. I same with yeah. Dancer in the Dark. But anyway, let's Indeed. yes, <laughs> let's not get into heavy, depressing uh, yeah. movies that are great and should all be watched. Let's yeah. talk about which of these terrible movies will help us escape. Escape the space prison. I mean, yeah. I, 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 the, the lockout one. I don't, I don't think it'll work. I, I think don't trust it. I think stealing a ship is stealing a ship. Right, no, so wait, did you come, you can't, You came here on a ship, came right? here on the Amazon, and as you said earlier, the security here is t- kind of bad, and what if, what if I just got my phone, right, and I just ordered us from Amazon? Uh, yeah. Which is, in fact, yes, I've got the Amazon app in my phone here. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to call up a little shuttle and then the delivery guy will come in and be like, he's here to pick up a package. And we'll get in this, like, during my arts and crafts session, yeah. when I made my little duck, I also made a fun box. So if I just make a little shipping label here and I, hold on. Right. Okay. We'll both climb inside this. Well, you don't need to climb inside this box. I'll do it anyway. Do you want to get in the box <laughs> now? Okay. Well, how many times do you get to fly in space in a cardboard box? Uh, 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 probably just this once. So let's pile in here, right? Okay. And uh, I'm just going to order up to my house. I'm going to order. What will we say this is? Well, I've made all these paper mache ducks. So we'll just we'll put them above and we'll say this is a package of paper mache ducks. And we'll order them for my house. Sounds good. And then and then the amazing dot dot com guy will come and pick us up. Yay! Yay! Cool. All right. Well, that's about all we have time for before we because uh, I I did pick express delivery, so he's <laughs> definitely on his way. So uh, we are on Twitter. We are at Seven Day Apocalypse. That is at numeral Seven Day Apocalypse. Uh, you can email us questions, queries, Wenjin being nice. That'd be cool too. Yeah. At uh, filmcast at thisweeksapocalypse.com. That's filmcast at thisweeksapocalypse.com. We are also now uploading uh, full episodes and soon possibly truncated episodes to YouTube. So you can go and join our channel there. This Week's Apocalypse, of course, is what we are <laughs> yeah. on there. And um, I guess let's just sit here and wait. Yeah. Uh, I paid three quid extra, so we should be here any minute. So, oh, we're jostling. Okay. Bye. Right. Well. Bye. Bye. Bye.